This is a small sideboard or buffet. I believe the, it's probably late 1800s. There's a stamp on the back that leads me to believe that it's 1890. It's pretty dirty, but I like y'all to see the before. It's a beautiful mirror on it. it. Does have some missing pieces on the feet. Fortunately, inside the drawer, they've put the pieces in there. So I may have to reconstructing on it, but not a great deal. It has its original hardware, all of it, which is nice. This drawer is massive, absolutely massive. Needs some good waxing, but after waxing, it'll be good. And they've left drawer runners, which is good. An old picture. Newspaper from 1965 that had lined the drawers. And another newspaper in this drawer from 1969. And you can get the latest washing machine for $188 in 1965. It's beautiful, beautiful moldings here. I think they're, they're just going to come up so beautiful. There's little moldings on top of the mirror. Have some nice columns on the mirror as well. This is the back of this piece. This is all one piece of wood. And you can see that this is the heartwood and this is sapwood. And it was a huge tree that was failed to make this piece. An absolutely monster tree. Underneath all this muck, I think there is quarter sawn white oak. And we're gonna go ahead and remove the hardware. has these little pieces on the front that have one little little tiny nail in them so we're just going to pry those off there we go these are great good for taking out staples that hold on backing pieces and things like that so we'll link those down below Usually on these pieces with this felt in it, I've got to put denatured alcohol on it and work like the dickens to get the felt out of the bottom of the drawer. But whoever did this one, I love them to pieces. Because they just covered a piece of cardboard and popped it in there. Look at that, the bottom of that drawer looks pristine. Oh, I love them, I love them so much. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna remove these little moldings as well. Um, I'm just gonna get a putty knife behind there and just gently start wiggling it. This one's not so bad because nobody has put you know, a ton of shellac on these. Um, I'm not, uh, I don't think they're even glued. So they're coming off pretty easily. I'm just gonna take my little tool back there. Wow, I don't know what wood that is, but they are quite weighty for such a little molding. Very weighty. Always have your blue tape ready. Be sure that you label where a molding came from. Those of you who have watched the channel before will know how I strip shellac off of a piece. If you're new to the channel, what I do is I get some denatured alcohol because on an antique, you really don't want to put a sander to it if you can help it. If you do sand, you want to do it by hand. So, 
We get our denatured alcohol. We'll put that in a cup. Get us a rag and just wipe it on. Now what this will do is it will reactivate shellac if it's shellac. And you can feel it when it starts reactivating, it'll start getting kind of sticky and you'll know, okay, I'm on the right path. If it is polyurethane though, that's a different story. But it's not often that an antique is finished with polyurethane, so. And you can see how it just starts removing that old shellac that is yellowed and has all the dirt and so forth in it. So if you look right here, you can see where that shellac was already breaking down, where it had some in some spots and some spots it had worn away. Look at this, just look what is under all of this yuck. I mean, look at it. Oh my God, this is going to be beautiful, y'all. Absolutely gorgeous. Gorgeous. Oh, I love it. All that you're doing is reactivating that shellac. That's all you're doing. Because to make shellac, you just take the crystals and put them in denatured alcohol, shake it, shake it, shake it, and that's it. That, that is how you make your shellac to re-shellac. Now, you could just leave it as is with its original shellac on it. Um, and call it job done. Cannot get over how beautiful this wood is. I knew it was going to be this. I'm so excited. Oh my God, I'm so excited. It doesn't take much, does it? I knew what was under here. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. Just look at it. It's gorgeous. Look at that. Look at that beautiful, beautiful grain. That's beautiful. I mean, to see the time. Because you just get like instant change the moment you put that, sh that denatured alcohol in the shellac. 47 and a half inch drawer. That's just, that's craziness. It has literally taken me eight minutes, 37 seconds to go from this to this. And we've even done the backside. You can see it doesn't take long if you just get your denatured alcohol, a lot less elbow grease than having to sand every little nook and cranny. Um, and then once we are done with the whole piece, I'll get more clean denatured alcohol. We'll wipe over it again one more time and with a nice clean rag, make sure everything's clean, let it dry overnight. The steel wool and the denatured alcohol really let you get into those grooves quite well and get all of that really dark, nasty shellac that's been there for so many years and just makes this look like new wood. Taking all of the discolored shellac off and now we're ready to put this back together. So let's do some small repairs that need to be done. In the cabinet piece, there is a drawer runner missing here. And fortunately, 
um, where I bought it, they had put it in one of the drawers. So we can put that back on. So let's get that back on. And the drawer runner has one little nail in it. So we're going to go ahead and remove that as well. And see if we can get this back in there. I can see the marks where where it was supposed to be, so we're going to make sure that we put it exactly where it was. With a piece this old and banging around on it, you're always going to bang some dust loose. So um, as soon as you do, go ahead and get that vacuumed up. No matter how much you clean these pieces, as old as they are, there's going to be a little bit of residual dust somewhere in a crevice or a runner somewhere so that's what I was doing there is just being sure that everything is nice and tidy again while I have it on its back and it's easier to access I'm going to go ahead and wax these drawer runners I always like to do that when I usually do it when I clean the piece that way it just saves me time later when I'm fighting with drawers and I don't have to think, okay, is it because it's not waxed? And this is just a hard wax. And makes everything glide so, so smooth. Alex did a little bit of research on these moldings for me. And they are either ironwood or ebony um, leaning towards ironwood because it is native to Florida whereas ebony would have been it's more of an exotic wood in this area so but as I say it's very dense very dense and it is just just lovely to think that someone actually spent so much time hand carving that design out of such a dense heavy wood but it's beautiful just beautiful now before we put this buffet back together we're going to go ahead and we're going to shellac everything before we put it back together and <clears throat> i'm going to explain about which shellac that i use um we use the shellac flakes. You mix them up with denatured alcohol. Um, there's a formula for how much you mix up to get whatever pound cut that you need. There are cuts that are good to use as a sealer. Um, some people will call it a seal coat. And there are cuts that you need to use for a finish. And we're going to put on a finish today. And... We're going to be using a two pound cut. I'm not going to get very far today. I've had to mix up more. You want to mix up your shellac the day before you're going to use it because your flakes have to dissolve in the denatured alcohol. So you need to shake it about every 15 minutes to a half hour when you start mixing it. And you just shake it up. And by tomorrow, all those flakes will be dissolved in that denatured alcohol. And then I can actually use it. Unfortunately, that's all I have. So I'm not going to get very far, but that's okay. I can at least show you what we're going to do to this piece. So for those of you who love to see it when we restore furniture rather than paint it, this is the video that you are going to love. No painting on this piece because this wood is spectacular and all I'm doing is just wiping it on and then we will come back we will sand in between these coats and we will do more coats and we will keep doing this until we've got probably six to ten coats on here. Um, I'll know by the way it feels, by the way it looks, when to stop.
I am just using a dauber. That's what they call it, a dauber. It's basically some cotton in a cheesecloth. And then I just spin it around. And that's what I use to do my shellac. And I use this dauber ball over and over again until it falls apart. And then I make another one. I store it in an airtight container with a little bit of denatured alcohol. And the next time that I'm ready to use it, it's ready to go. When the dauber ball starts dragging a bit, that's when you know that you need to get more shellac on that dauber ball. Never go back over it until you're ready to put on your next coat. You will leave streaks through it. So if there's something you don't like, just leave it and fix it on the next round. Be sure to wear gloves. It's really sticky. Your hands will be ooh, terribly sticky and the denatured alcohol will dry them out a lot too. So be sure you wear gloves. I've already done this part. So we're going to go down here and do this side. And we'll just keep working until we run out of shellac. And then we'll have to find something else to do. This is actually set two days now because um, I didn't do anything in the shop yesterday. This is why I'm getting nothing done, isn't it? Because <laughs> I'm reading history. Um, Mount Airy ponders plans for cable TV. <laughs> oh, we have a jumble. We could do a jumble. But this is actually set two days, so everything's all mixed up. As you can see, it's there's no, no flakes in there, so it's ready to use. We've shook it, taken the lid off, which sometimes can be a bit of a challenge. And now I'm going to pour this into a, into a bit smaller receptacle because I have a tendency to spill them, as y'all know. Okay, Alex has finished carving us the little missing details on these legs this would have been so much different it's something that we haven't tried to do we don't have a lathe in our wood shop yet not saying that that won't happen but as yet we do not have one it's one of the two tools that we don't have that um we wish that we did sometimes, but you don't use it enough really to justify it. Okay, the first thing that we want to do before we try and blend color is seal this new wood. Because if you try to stain this new wood to match this, it's going to absorb a lot more of the stain and it's going to be much darker than this older wood. So. We're just going to put a seal coat on here. And while we're at it, we'll go ahead and put a coat of shellac on these little legs. That way we can get a true color. Those feet. Alright, so we've got a seal coat on there and we're just going to let that dry and then we will start trying to get the color. And I'm sealing all of the new wood that he put on here and then that way we can go back and color it to match the rest of the piece. I'm just toning this down a little bit with some Dixie Belle Espresso. It's a no pain gel stain. And that's just gonna let that, that dark get into those grooves a bit better. And um, hopefully 
blend that in some. So just kind of letting it get into those grooves and then wiping it back. This will not be an exact match. It was never going to be. And, you know, it's just one of those things that if somebody wants to take it off later, they are just put on easily and can be taken off just as easily. Now that this is dry, what we're going to do is we are going to take a 4 aught steel wool and just, just go over it. This will take out any nibs or anything like that and make this just feel like butter by the time we are done. We are going to do this in between every coat on every surface. So that when you run your hand across this beautiful, beautiful wood, it just makes you want to keep touching it. Alright, we're getting this mirror all cleaned up. I put the cleaner on it and cleaned it. And let me tell you, it was... Let me tell you, it was filthy. I mean, filth. But it does have that original mirror look to it. And I'll show you what I mean here in a minute. Okay, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it in the camera. But it has some discoloration where the silver's coming off the back or letting loose. So that's just going to have to be part of its charm. Alright, I've got Alex down here. And we are going to put the piece that holds the mirror back together now. You can see the halo here of how this piece goes on, that this is your flat bottom piece here. So we're just going to find the original holes. We're using the original nails that were in it. You just tell we're in the middle? Yeah, we're definitely on the middle. Okay. This piece, these nails go into these. There we go. Right. I'm in. Here we go. Okay. And then we flip it over. And I have the screws labeled. So number four goes with number four. Three with three. And two with two. I'm going to let you put the screws in and I'm going to finish up this top. Okay, there's one thing we need to do to this top and then it'll be completed. And we're going to go ahead and run a steel wool across it. Just take out any nibs in that shellac finish. And we're just going to wipe it down. And what we're going to do is we're going to give it a wax with some steel wool with this Howard's Feed and Wax. And when we're done, it'll be protected and feel oh so smooth. I'm just going to get that wax on there. And this stuff smells amazing. Don't you like the smell of it, Alex? Yeah, let's test it. You don't eat it. Alex has a habit of Alex has a habit of trying to eat cosmetics. You have to watch him. It smells very orangey. It does smell very orangey. And we're just gonna give it a wipe down. So we're gonna slot. This is where we don't want to break it. 
Just drop it. <laughs> We're in. All right. Now, most of the wedges are taped to the back where they came out. <laughs> That's the last thing you need when you're putting a mirror on. Oh, the wrong angle. Yeah. We have finished this stunning antique buffet. It came out better than I could have imagined. The beautiful quarter sawn oak looks fantastic now. You just wouldn't have imagined that that, that wood would have been under all that muck. Um, inside is just beautiful. There was no need to, to really do any embellishment in there because it's stunning the way it was. And the moldings that are ironwood, we feel quite sure now after doing more research that this is ironwood. Um, probably from Florida, which is native to. The drawers came out beautiful. They slide nicely. And I think the piece just speaks for itself. It's just gorgeous. If you found this video helpful, please remember hit that like and subscribe button. Hit the bell notification. You'll know every time we come out with a new video. And if you're interested in purchasing any of the pieces that we do, check out our Etsy store. And this piece will be going on there very shortly. New Drake biography. Nope, not the Canadian singer. It used to be when you said Drake, it was Francis Drake. <laughs>